One of the questions I'm asked most often is what happens if my platform or my broker goes bust? And this is a worry for investors everywhere. It's not just the UK or the US. But in this video, we'll look at the risks of that happening, but also the loss that you could suffer if it does happen and some of the actions that you can take to reduce the risk of it happening in the first place. And we'll also look at one episode where it did happen and see what the consequences were. This video is sponsored by Incogni, an app that lets you take back control of your data privacy. I think a good place to start is to consider what the greatest risks are to your investments and where platform risk or broker risk sits within that spectrum. Now, I'd say the greatest risk is your behavior, because if you sell when markets crash, if you take too much risk by concentrating in just a few stocks or not enough risk by not putting enough into stocks over the long term, well, all of these behaviors are going to damage your wealth. And I think that's actually the biggest risk of all. The risk which most people think of when they think about investing is market risk, the risk that markets do crash and that there is a big fall in the value of your investments. However, by diversifying your portfolio and also having the right tolerance to risk and understanding these crashes do happen and they're actually sales and not selling when they do occur, you can mitigate the effects of those crashes. Another big risk, which people don't usually think of as a risk, is fee risk. And that's paying too high a fee for your investments and just paying away a lot of your returns to the finance industry. I speak to so many people who end up doing this. So if you're paying more than about 0.2% overall for all of your investments, and that includes the investment platform, the fees for the funds that you use, and any advice that you get, then that's probably too much. So don't make the finance industry rich, make yourself rich. Another risk which is at the forefront of our minds at the moment is inflation, because we've just had a big spike in inflation, and this is what you have to beat over the long term. And really, the best investment for beating inflation long term is the global stock market. And again, this is a risk which you can mitigate by selecting the right investments. Now, platform risk or broker risk does come into the list, but I'd say it sits well at the bottom of the order. And the reason for that is that there's so much regulation protecting you as an investor if you invest in regulated securities on regulated exchanges. But it's fair to say that the risk is not zero, so we'll think now about what those risks are. So how risky is a broker or investment platform? Well, when we're thinking about losses, usually you have to multiply together two things. The first one is the probability that your platform is going to fail over the next year or over some period of time. And that probability is very low. Just look at the major platforms and count how many of them have failed in recent memory or in living memory. Then in order to ascertain how much you'd lose on average, you'd multiply that probability of failure by the loss if a failure occurs. It turns out there are lots of protections in place to ensure that even if a platform does go down, then you won't make a loss, or at least those losses will be very limited. So let's start off with that first number, the probability of your platform failing. So here's an arbitrarily chosen list of UK platforms. And my point is that if you choose one of these large, well-known ones, which are regulated, and we'll see how to check them in a moment, then I think the probability of failure is very low. Not zero, but very low. And a rule of thumb is the larger the broker, the lower the probability that it's going to fail. And that's because the regulator will be very careful with the largest platforms because it'll lose its own credibility if it's seen to be sleeping on the job. Also, to perpetrate a fraud at one of these large brokers like Vanguard, say, would, I think, be much more difficult than at one of these very small firms where compliance checks might not be so thorough. Now, we've been talking about the risk of platforms. Another risk is that people can get hold of your personal data. It turns out that fraudsters can buy your personal data from third parties called data brokers. And the kind of information that they can buy about you includes things like your name, your date of birth, your email address, your phone number, even your relatives. And it could include some financial information about you. But even if the data is not going to be used by fraudsters, wouldn't you like to have control of that data? However, the problem if you were going to do this yourself is that you don't know the names of those data brokers 
and it'll take a long time to track them all down and to ask them to remove your personal data. Incogni, the sponsor of today's video, allows you to do that very easily. Within seconds of signing up, when I tried it, they'd already contacted 46 data brokers. So here's my dashboard on Incogni, and it allows me to keep track of those requests. So you can see 46 requests were sent, 23 are in progress, and 23 have been completed. Or I can go to a detail view and say sort by severity. So here you can see one of the data brokers has been suppressed, one's been completed, and one's still in progress. And you can drill down into the nature of the risks. In this case, it's identity theft, spam mail and calls, data leaks, targeted advertising, and it may affect my credit rating. Furthermore, you can see that I've been added to nine suppression lists so that I won't be added to these databases in future. So if you want to take back control of your personal data, then just use the promo code PENSION or use this link. You'll also find that link in the description below. And if you use that code, you'll get 60% off your annual plan with Incogni. And that comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. But let's say that there was a failure of your platform. How much would you lose if that happened? In the UK, we have something called the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, which will be there in case your broker doesn't have enough funds to make you whole. But the protection there is limited to a maximum of £85,000, and that's per person per firm. So if you and your partner both invest, each of you will have that £85,000 protection. And if you're in doubt about whether your platform is protected by FSCS, then just click on this button you can see on this page, and you can learn more about how to check it out. In the US, the equivalent body is called SIPC, it's Securities Investor Protection Corporation, and that covers loss of stocks or other securities up to a limit of $500,000. And that includes $250,000 in cash claims. But these compensation schemes are a last line of defense, as we'll see. But it's probably worthwhile checking whether your broker or platform is covered by your regional compensation scheme by going to the website of that compensation scheme. Also, you can ask your broker, are you covered by the scheme? Here in the UK, for example, if you look at the FSCS's website, they suggest this three-stage process, all of which is quite easy to ensure that you're covered. Firstly, to be eligible, your platform needs to be authorised by the Financial Conduct Authority, and there's a register you can check to see whether that's the case. Secondly, not all activities, financial activities, such as giving advice or managing assets, are covered by that authorization. So check that they're authorized to do what they're doing for you. And thirdly, although this sounds obvious, ask the company, is what you're doing for me a regulated activity? And more importantly, is the money I invest FSCS protected and up to a limit of how much? Now in the UK, the Financial Conduct Authority has this online register where you can actually look up whether a company's authorized and also see what activities are authorized. Now, I said those compensation schemes were a last resort, which sounds odd, but there are actually rules set by the regulators which ensure that it's unlikely to get to that stage. If you think about what could happen in an insolvency, the real problem is that your assets and your money get mixed up with those of the broker or the platform. If that's the case, it's going to be really difficult to untangle the two. So one of the things that regulators in the UK ensure, also in the US, is called segregation, and that's segregation of both your assets and your cash. In the UK, you can find these rules and guidance for segregation of assets and funds in the FCA rulebook. It's called CAS Rule 552, and the equivalent rule in the US is called the Exchange Act Rule 15C3-3. But really, it's a matter of separating things out to make it easy for the liquidator if one of these brokers goes bust. So, for example, if you look at Vanguard's UK platform, this is what they say about the risk of them becoming insolvent. In the unlikely event that we become insolvent, your money and your investments will be returned to you as soon as possible or transferred to another provider. They then go on to say that any funds that you own with us are registered in a nominee account and held in accordance with Financial Conduct Authority rules. So those are the cash rules that we were talking about previously. And any cash you hold with Vanguard is held separately in a trust account at an authorised bank, again according to FCA rules. So you're probably thinking, what's a nominee account? Surely it should be held in my name if I own the fund. 
But what you have to understand is a legal distinction here. And that distinction is between something called the beneficial owner, which is you and I. You can also think of that as the economic owner, because if you sell that holding, that fund, you'll get the money. But that's distinct from the legal owner. So if you think about the share register, if you own shares on a platform, the actual shares will be held in the nominee account in the name of the broker. So the broker is the legal owner, but you remain the beneficial owner. So what's really important here is that the broker or platform has to keep a list of who put what into the nominee account and the numbers should match up. So John bought a thousand shares and they go into the nominee account. Jane bought 2000 shares and they also go into the nominee account. And as long as those records are accurate, everything's fine. Because if you sell some shares, then they'll come out of the nominee account and those will be adjusted. The numbers will be adjusted in line with what happened. Now, of course, this bookkeeping can go wrong. Some platforms are sloppy with their record keeping and sometimes there's outright fraud. So this is where some of the risks come in. Now, it is the case that if there is an insolvency and the platform hasn't got enough money to pay the insolvency practitioner, there is a legal recourse that the practitioner can take to use some of your assets and some of your funds which are then sold, in order to pay their fees. Because what could happen in the unlikely event of a platform failing is that an insolvency practitioner, which is an accountancy firm, will step in and take control of the company. And then if they discover that there is a mismatch between the nominee accounts and what they see people put into those nominee accounts, i.e. there are missing assets or maybe even missing funds, then somebody has to untangle the problem. Now, regulators try to force platforms to have enough regulatory capital that these kind of shortfalls won't occur. So this is why I think sticking to large platforms is unlikely to lead to these kind of problems. But if there are insufficient funds to pay the fees for the insolvency practitioner, they can apply to the court for what's called a Barclay Applegate order. It's got that name because of the firms involved in the legal precedent. But essentially what this lets them do is to sell some of your assets and take some of your cash to pay their fees. The alternative would probably be worse because somebody's got to sort out the mismatch and to ensure that you get some kind of fair compensation despite all the muddles in the records. Now I said I'd mention a precedent where this did happen and this is an example from the UK and it's called Beaufort Securities. Now the insolvency practitioner in this case was PwC. And there was a lot of anger because they said that it was going to cost them £100 million in fees in order to sort out the mess left when this company failed. Now, of course, the investors who'd lost money were very upset about that. They thought that the fees were excessive and they said it would be much more reasonable to charge £35 million. But as it turned out, in this case, a deal was struck between the FSCS and the administrator and client assets were protected. In fact, one of the investment managers at Beaufort Securities was involved in a sting in the United States where he was allegedly involved in trying to launder money, proceeds of a scam, through the art market. In fact, by selling this Picasso painting. In the event that sale of the Picasso didn't happen and for the investors, they were made whole. So I guess that's a happy ending. So to summarise then, I think the risk of your platform or broker going bust is not zero, but it's very, very low. There are much bigger risks to your wealth than the platform risk. There are actions you can take to mitigate that risk and reduce your loss if a failure does occur. But there are also lots of regulations in place, such as those money and asset segregation rules, which ensure that the job of the liquidator should be a straightforward one. But even if those fail, then you've also got those compensation schemes. So it's worth checking if your account is covered. And don't forget, you can actually ask your platform, is my money covered by this compensation scheme? It's definitely worth doing. Now, if these regulations and the compensation schemes don't put your mind at rest, it's still possible to reduce the risk of loss by splitting across multiple platforms. That way, if one of your platforms does become insolvent, you'll lose less money. However, the cost of that is greater book work in order to maintain those multiple accounts and remember all those extra passwords. 
But personally, I don't feel very worried by platform risk. I think there are much bigger risks to my capital, and the biggest one is my behaviour. So most of my time, I spend worrying about how to avoid doing bad things and putting processes in place so that my behaviour is kept under control. Now, don't forget our offer from Incogni. If you want to take back control of your personal data, you'll get 60% off your annual plan. And there'll be a link to that in the description below, or just use the promo code PENSION. And, as always, thank you for listening.